Hi and welcome to my maths class. When we are doing factorizing, we are making brackets. That is our aim, to make brackets. Also, to try to get it to the lowest power. Now, there are certain steps to follow when you are doing factorizing. Number one is to take out a common. Taking out a common is the first rule most pupils forget. So you must learn to write down the steps and then see, have I taken a common? Have I done this? Have I done this? The second one you usually look for is difference of two squares. Now difference of two squares means the question must always have a negative. Then it must always be two terms. The next one is trinomials. Then we have grouping. And last we have cubes. In order to do most syllabus in maths, especially for grade 12, your factorizing has to be your strongest point. Now, let's do the following examples. When you are doing factorizing, you will notice that these examples don't come so easy. They mixed up and you have to sometimes look for the answers. If you take the following example, 9x squared into x squared minus 5x plus 6 minus 16 into x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, the first rule is to take out a common. To take out a common, you have to look in every term. Pluses and minuses break terms. So basically, this is where the crack is. Now, in each term, what is the same? The part that is the same is this entire x squared minus 5x plus 6. So when we're taking out a common, we're looking at each term and we're taking out what is the same. So I've got x squared minus 5x plus 6. After I've taken out the common, what is left in each, each block? What is left in each term? In the first one, I've got 9x squared. Then I've got my sine minus. And in the second one, I have 16. Now, we've made the brackets. But is it at the lowest power? Can we go further? If you look at x squared minus 5x plus 6, it is a trinomial. How do I factorize a trinomial? When we're doing trinomials, we said first we look at the last sign in the term. Because it's a plus, we have two options, plus and plus or minus and minus. Then we look at the second term. If I continue with minus and minus. When I add or subtract, I'm going to have minus there. I'm going to have positive there. So when I multiply, first I multiply. Plus times plus gives me a plus. I multiply minus times minus gives me a plus. Then I'm adding or subtracting to get my sign of my second term. So I've got plus, plus will equal to plus. Minus, minus will equal to minus. If you are not comfortable with this rule, please look at our video where we discuss common mistakes or common errors. So I know that I'm going to have a minus and minus in both brackets. x squared becomes x, x. And then the 6, the factors of 6. 1 and 6, 3 and 2. I know both my signs are going to be minus. This one is going to equal to minus 7. This one is going to equal to minus 5. So the one that is winning is minus 3 minus 2. That is how we factorize the trinomial. Now if you look at the second bracket, there is a difference of two squares. Difference of two squares is where we root the first term. So I've got root of 9x squared and we root the second term, 16. This gives me 3x and this gives me 4. So in the first bracket, we've got 3x minus 4. And in the second bracket, we've got 3x plus 4. 
Now when you look at the question, we've completely factorized because there's only one term. Number two, they are at the lowest powers. Let's do another example. If I have, if I have ax cubed plus ay cubed minus px cubed minus py cubed. If you look, you will see we can't take out a common. There's no common in all four terms. So we go to grouping. When we group, you're going to have ax cubed plus ay cubed. And then we have a plus sign. And then we've got minus px cubed minus py cubed. Now we're going to take out a common in the first bracket, which is a, and we're left with a cubed plus y cubed. And if we take out a common in the second bracket, it is advisable to take out minus p because when you take out a minus p, we would end up with x cubed plus y cubed, which would make us then be able to take out a common on the second bracket. Our common being, if we look at each term, x cubed plus y cubed, leaving us with a minus p. Now even though you factorized, we have not completely factorized because we still got x to the power 3 plus y to the power 3. That can be further factorized like how we had done cubes in our previous video. So if we cube root x to the power 3, I'm going to have x plus, we're going to cube root y to the power 3, which will give me y. Then the square of x is x squared, giving me the first term. The square of y is giving me positive y squared. And the middle term, we're going to multiply the two, we're going to change the sign. So it's minus xy. Now that factorized version is for x cubed plus y cubed. We still have to put in a minus p. And now you've completely factorized because even though we have an x squared in the factorizing, x squared minus xy plus y squared cannot be factorized at this level. Thank you for watching.